<laughs> yes, indeed. It's, it's finally here, yo. What's up, everybody? Man, it's your boy, Mr. Dugar, coming at y'all with another video, man. <laughs> and today, I'm going to preview and predict this week's huge NFC East showdown. The de facto NFC East championship game between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys, yo. Um, before I get into this video, man, for everyone, if you want to give me a follow on Instagram or send me a friend request on Facebook, I'm going to have my Instagram and my Facebook information down in the description box. Um, come give me a follow on the gram. Come send me a request on the book. Um, come holla at your boy, yo. <laughs> to all you Dallas Cowboy fans, man, you know, I just got something to say before I get started. Sincerely, from, from the bottom of my heart, man, from dig deep in my heart, yo. I don't like y'all. I can't stand y'all. You don't understand how much I just want to whoop y'all behind on Sunday. You don't understand how bad I want this game, man. <laughs> uh, man, um, we here. We here, yo. After the butt whipping Dallas gave us what it was week 7, 37 to 10. <coughs> Excuse me. I remember thinking about it and saying in the video, you know what? When we meet again in week 16 in Philly, that's going to decide the division. This game today, I know it's, it looks cute. I know it gives Dallas fans a lot of hope for the future. I get all that. It may, we was embarrassed. I get all that. But I say ultimately this game don't mean anything. The week 16 matchup in Philly is going to determine the division. I'm like, whoever wins that game, I'm like, both teams are going to go into that game with the same record. And whoever wins that game is going to win the NFC East. And lo and behold, here we are, yo. You try to run away from us. You try to lap us and all this other stuff. And here we are. We both been very inconsistent this season. Um, at times, both looked, you know, solid. Um, you know, Eagles got some great wins at Green Bay, at Buffalo. You know what I'm saying? Um, Dallas got a couple of blowout wins, including one against us. So both teams at times look pretty doggone good. Both teams at times look pretty putrid. So here we are. Here we go. <laughs> um, you know, first looking at them, man, um, um, on their offensive line, obviously they got a very good offensive line. Um, you know, Teron Smith, um, you know, uh, Travis Frederick, Zach Martin, Lyle Collins, former LSU Tiger. Um, and they all missing, um, I think it's Connor Williams. They missing their right guard, but nevertheless, solid offensive line. Um, apparently Dak Prescott has a shoulder injury, um, that he sustained again against the Rams. I don't remember it happening, but, Apparently, he hardly been able to throw in practice all week. Um, but me personally, like, I feel like you're going to see a normal Dak Prescott out there. I don't really feel like, you know, not granted, I'm not a doctor. I'm not over there actually watching him. I'm not him, so I don't know his pain tolerance. But just my opinion, being an Eagle fan, I'm not going into this game like, oh, boy, Dak has a shoulder injury, y'all. Like, I feel like I'm going into this game like nothing wrong with him. You know what I'm saying? Um, obviously, Zeke Elliott, one of the best running backs in the league. $100 million man. Wide receiver, Amari Cooper, pro, former top five pick. You know, Michael Gallup, solid second-year receiver. Randall Cobb made a lot of plays in this league. Jason, Jason, 84-year-old Witten, made a turn back the clock last week, caught a one-handed touchdown. Blake Jarwin is a guy who every now and then makes good plays. You look at him defensively. Demarcus Lawrence, hundred million dollar DN. Robert Quinn, a former, well, I think he was a first round pick. Guy made Pro Bowls in this league. Michael Bennett, a guy who made Pro Bowls in this league, played well. Was our leading sack guy last season. Um, I know they're missing Lathan Vanderis, which is a big loss for them. But you got Sean Lee, who turned back, who's actually out there playing, turned back the hands of time last. We got an interception and a sack. 
You got Jalen Smith, you know, big money linebacker. Secondary, you know, you got, uh, you know, not, you know, you got guys of Woozy and all them, Jeff Heat, but you know, they led by cornerback Byron Jones, who is a former first round pick, solid player. You know, not granted, they still got the clap of Jason Garrett at head coach. And I just want to remind Cowboy fans who are saying they're just going to supposedly obliterate the Eagles this week that, oh, by the way, he is still your coach for this game. <laughs> like, Jerry Jones hasn't replaced them with Lincoln Riley, Urban Meyer, whoever pipe dream y'all have for a head coach. Jason Garrett, the clapper, is still there this weekend. With all that being said, hey, Dallas is loaded with talent. Look at our, our my Eagles offensive line. Um, it's up in the air if my all uh, Pro Bowl right tackle Lane Johnson will even play this week. Um, Big V who played okay last week, but you know at times he looks horrible. Um, Brandon Brooks, um, who is arguably the best right guard in all of the NFL. Jason Ke a Pro Bowler. Jason Kelsey, who is arguably the best center in the NFL, a Pro Bowler. Steve, um, oh, Steve, <laughs> Isaac Samalo, who it, he has his moments. At times look good, at times look bad. Um, ain't been hearing his name for penalties, so assuming he's looking good. And old man Jason Peters, man, who's obviously past his prime, still are, is effective at times as long as he's not leaving the game with an injury and as long as he's not committing a false start. Now, tight end groups is very, very good. Zach Ertz. Um, one of the top three tight ends in all of the NFL. To me, the best route running tight end in the NFL. Pro bowler. He out there doing this thing. Dallas got it as long as he could hang on to the football. He's a very, very good tight end. And wide receivers. I mean, nobody knows these guys. I mean, you know, you got J.J. Ortega, white side, who was a second round pick. You know, I get it his early in his career, but right now it's not really looking like looking like a bad draft pick. Um, can't it's slow, can't create any separation. Um, you looking at Greg Ward Jr., a uh, undrafted guy who is a college quarterback. Oh, is out there making game winning catches over Josh Norman with the game on the line, but nevertheless, a practice squad guy. You have Robert Davis, who the only Robert Davis I ever knew of was the legendary um, Houston, um, the late legendary Houston DJ Screw, you know, RIP to him. Um, that's the only Robert Davis I heard of. <laughs> but we got this Robert Davis over here who didn't even get a target last week, I think, is out there playing significant snaps for us. Um, running back, you know, you got Miles, a rookie, Miles Sanders, second round pick who... You know, to me, I think has a chance to be like a Le'Veon Bell in this league. Um, it's starting to come along a little bit. You got Boston Scott, another undrafted guy, um, a guy who floated around on the practice squad, out there looking like the second coming to Darren Sproles, but nevertheless, an undrafted guy. You look at the defense, Fletcher Cox, who obviously I, he's a pro bowler but honestly i think he got in the pro bowl based off of reputation he did not have a great year this year you have i can't timmy jernigan who's in and out of the lineup um defensive end brandon graham who sometimes looks solid sometimes look oh it, it just depends on what day it is Derek barnett who you know is either out there looking solid or, or injured <laughs> you know um you know, linebacker core of do we TJ Edwards, an undrafted rookie, though he is playing pretty good football. Um, we just had to place Kamir Gruja Hill on IR. Um, you have Nigel Bradham out there, Nathan Gary, a converted safety. And oh, and by the way, we have you have our secondary, which is horrible. <laughs> like you have Jalen Mills, who is so delusional, he asking people to vote for him in the Pro Bowl. Um, you have Ronald Darby, who just cannot catch an interception or tackle. You have Avante Maddox, who at times looks okay, and then at times don't know what he's doing out there. Um, Malcolm Jenkins, obviously, is still a solid, great leader back there, but obviously he's not the player he once was. And you got Rodney McLeod, who sometimes makes a nice play and sometimes gets burnt. Um, oh, and by the way, we do have, you know, Super Bowl champion head coach Dougie P. So clearly, when you look at both teams, I'll even tell you, Dallas is with the injuries the Eagles have, no Deshaun, no Alshon Jeffrey, possibly no Jordan Howard, possibly no Lane Johnson. 
you know, Malik Jackson been out all year. Um, with these, Kamir Gruja Hill is out. With these injuries, Dallas is clearly the more talented team. <laughs> like, they are clearly more. They got pro bowlers and $100 million players everywhere. The Eagles are sitting here, you know, with practice squad players, yo. But you look at the matchups, man. Um, Dallas defense against the Eagles offense. Um, obviously, what worries me is if Lane Johnson does not play, Big V trying to block Demarcus Lawrence really worries me, yo. I hope Lane Johnson could really go out there and play. That's what worries me, him coming around and stripping wins for a strip sack. Um, what makes me feel good is just this fountain of you, even though these guys are undrafted, unknown players, don't have no money. Like Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, Greg Ward Jr., along with the consistency of Zach Ertz, they have shot a little bit of life into this offense. And I feel like as long as Wentz has time to throw the ball, you know, we're going to make some things happen. When you look at the Eagles defense against the Cowboys offense, you know, where I feel good at, um, I feel good from the standpoint, I think, if a motivated Fletcher Cox could dominate this game, like a motivated Fletcher Cox could get into the backfield, man, and, and wreak havoc against the run or against the pass. Um, you know, got to stop the run, obviously. Well, I feel bad, obviously, if Dak has time to throw. Those receivers killing my defensive backs down the field. But notice one person I never mentioned for the Eagles. Number 11, the $100 million franchise quarterback, Carson Wentz. I know some people feel like the Los Angeles Rams game, the game he tore his ACL, was the biggest game of his career up to the, uh, so far, which I think to this point it has been. This is the biggest game of Wentz's career so far. That's why I waited to men talk about him last. The biggest issue I had, Wentz got to stop fumbling the ball. Like he got if he gets sacked, hold on to the ball, go down, live to fight another day, punt it away, or whatever. Stop fumbling the ball, Wins. I love you, but you gotta stop. You gotta hold on to this football for your boy. But when he's not fumbling the ball, when you look at the extreme talent he has, why wow, he could drop back, throw balls on a rope, then throw these little floating fadeaway jumpers. How he could maneuver in the pocket. You know, his intelligence. Wentz is amazing. If Carson Wentz wins this game with the limited amount of weapons he has, with the division on the line, I don't ever want to hear Dak is better than Wentz ever again. You hear me, Cowboy fans? If Wentz goes out there and gets this done, with all this talent y'all have, because I'll even tell you, y'all got more talent, top to bottom. But y'all don't have the better coach, and you don't have the better, despite what y'all say, you don't have the better quarterback. You know, all this wheelchair wins and all this other stuff, y'all was hoping and praying he wouldn't be around for this Week 16 matchup. You know what? He's out, he's out there. He's out there. And that's going to be the difference in this game. Carson Wentz, I believe, is going to have a great game Sunday. He's made for this. All the adversity he dealt with. All oh, y'all should have kept foes. All this nonsense. All oh, he gonna get injured in week by week four. All this, all oh, he trash. Even got our own fans turning on him and booing him. Not understanding. He out there with Alshon Jeffrey and Nelson Aguilar, who actually got an agenda against him. You know, funny how there is those guys go out and the offense looks better with, with lesser talent. You feel me? So Carson Wentz, to me, is going to be the difference in this game. And for my prediction, I have the Philadelphia Eagles 23, the Dallas Cowboys 20. And all you Cowboy fans could go out there and make your little excuses. All oh, Jason Garrett, all oh, Dak was hurt, whatever you say. Eagles going to get it done Sunday, and Eagles going to end up taking this division, and you're going to go sit home with all your $100 million players, yo. Mark my words, man. Eagles 23, Cowboys 20. 
Um, but with that being said, man, that's all I got for y'all today. Appreciate y'all checking out the video. Go on, hit the like button for your boy, and give me a subscribe, man. I'm going to have Philadelphia Eagles and NFL content throughout the year. Also, this coming Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Pacific, I'm going to do a live Q&A. Y'all can come on there, ask me anything, tell me anything. I'll answer your questions, respond to your comments, and shout you out on the live, yo. Y'all come join me, man. Some good stuff. Until then, man, y'all have a blessed one. Fly Eagles fly. NFC East on the line, baby. Let's get it.